Oh, you see the face? Look at me now. Oh, My name is Staff Sergeant Philip Anakta. I am the recruiter for PCS Mira Mesa. Today, we're about to pick up one of our police who's going to ship out to recruit training. So the final ship brief is when I go down to the applicant's house, to the police house, sit down with their parents, and give them how the whole rundown is going to happen for today and then the next day. I was actually nervous about a lot of things to begin with. But it was like the small stuff that I probably shouldn't be nervous about. And now like I've talked to so many people and then like the little tower thing you jumped off, it scared me at first because I thought like if you didn't hold it correctly, like you could hurt yourself. But then like I talked to him about it and he's like, no, you'll be fine. Like so that that scared me that that was basically it. I chose Marine Corps and the military specifically because uh I wanted to do something different. Uh, with it, uh, my family, I'd actually be the first one to, to be joining the Marine Corps. On your final ship brief, when you go down to MEPS for the last time before you ship out to recruit training, you're going to be meeting with your MEPS liaisons at 5.30 in the morning. Immediately right after that, you're going to go inside MEPS. Go through the whole process as if when you first stepped in. You're going to go through your medical process, which is going to do the full medical inspect, height and weight, make sure you're still in within uh, shipping standards and as well as last minute disclosures. This is your final opportunity to make sure everything that's in your enlistment record is 100% accurate. This is your last chance. You have no other opportunity but today. This is the only time in your Marine Corps career where you can get an entry level waiver. Everything after today, when you swear in and you become a recruit, I'll cross your arms, all right? There's no waiver for that. It's considered fraud. You're gonna be held accountable for that. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once the process is completely done of, of the medical inspect and you're talking to the MEPS liaisons, you're then going to go into the swear-in room and talk to the, MEPS li uh, to the MEPS liaison for final time. This is when you do your active duty swear-in. During this time, once you raise your right hand, do the oath of enlistment, that's it. You're, you're set to boot camp. You're set to boot camp. You're set to boot camp. What do you think it'll be like? Very intense. I was slacking a little bit in school and I wanted to get my life on track. So like I said, I expect uh, heaven and hell at the same time. Maybe sometimes it's gonna be hard, sometimes it's gonna be easy, but I hope it's a good experience. You will not have any drinks, any food, any cell phone items like that, we understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have any airline tickets or anything that does not, flight information, anything like that, it will get thrown away, you understand that? Yes, sir. Receipt, all stuff like that will get thrown away. You are now on board Marine Corps Crew Depot, San Diego, California, building 622. The only words that will come out of your mouth are going to be yes, sir, and no, sir, when I ask you a question. Yes, This is it. This is what I came here for. No one forced me to come here. I came here willingly knowing that I would be pushed to my limits to become one of, the, one of America's greatest fighting force, the United States Marines.
Cyber Unit MTL, do you understand? Yes, sir! MTL, your bug is inside the cover, do you understand? Yes, sir! You got 40 seconds. Uh, yes, sir! Uh, yes, sir! When we first showed up and we got all our belongings and our, our all our personal items and identities stripped away, and right before our haircuts, it felt like we had hit just rock bottom. And all the friends we made on the bus ride over here, all the friends we made at MEPS, on the airplane rides, depending on where you came from, um, you couldn't even identify them anymore. They got their head shaved, all their like personal identification was all gone, their clothes was different. And at that point, you were pretty much just all alone. No one was talking, everyone was standing at whatever they thought attention was and just trying to get by at least for the few hours that we were there waiting for our haircuts and stuff. The purpose of the first phone call that recruit get when he, when he gets down here is just to let the person, whoever he's calling, uh, preferably the next of kin, Hello. mother, father, car, whoever, is I'm just sure basically to let them know that he made it down here safely. Oh, phone call is about 30 seconds. Just say, hello, I love you. Um, I made it down here to MCRD. I'll begin training. You'll receive a letter from me within the first two weeks. Do you have any questions? That's literally it. He gives, them, he gives the person about 25 seconds to answer a question. If not, he says, I love you, and then he hangs up. advise them to do is to be calm and relaxed, to come in in an orderly fashion. If they have a mole, to describe it to us and locate it so we know where it is. And just tell them to relax. Don't, don't be stiff, be flexible. And it'll be over within 40 seconds. Now, once the lights go off, you're gonna take out your linen, and you're gonna set up your rack and go to sleep, you understand? Yes, sir. So when we first got a chance to sleep during receiving week and we hadn't slept for probably at least 50 hours, we were so exhausted that when we laid down we couldn't even sleep. We were just so stressed out from everything and it wasn't that the drill instructors were stressing us out, it was just the environment that we were put in. We were taken away from our homes, we're out of our beds and now we're in this uncomfortable small spring bed with like almost hotel feeling sheets and with a bunch of random people that we haven't built the camaraderie with that we could connect with and we could feel comfortable with. And anything from the showers to the, the lights that were beaming in your eyes when you're asleep would just make you think of, try to think of the reason why you're here. I made a promise to my family that I'll come back and bring. It motivates me to keep going through boot camp as my father. I will never quit. I won't be ashamed. Just bring down their back home. When I first saw my drill instructor, uh, we were all sitting down, kind of like in a school circle around the drill instructor hut and they kicked the door open and we're all sitting there and they all walked out perfectly spaced out perfectly in step and my heart started just like it just dropped in my chest and it was pretty scary it's probably like one of the most intimidating moments of my life what went through my mind when i first met my drill instructors oh uh, at first i was like thinking oh yeah this isn't that bad and they were swearing in, and then they turned around and faced us. And the look on their faces was like they wanted to kill us, and they were staring right through my face, right in my eyes. And I was immediately like, wow, this is going to be the hardest three months of my life. It is our mission to train each and every one of you to become a United States Marine. A Marine is characterized as one who possesses the highest of military virtues. He obeys orders respects his seniors, and strives constantly to be the best at everything he does. Everything, they, every movement was perfect. I had watched videos on YouTube before about it, and like, I've seen it millions of times, but actually seeing it in person was completely different. The way they spoke, the way they moved, everything was just perfectly in sync. And it was just, in, in general, like, super intimidating and like, a lot to live up to. 
The purpose of the whirlwind and the, the screaming and the chaos after the senior general surgery's speech is to kind of snap the recruits into the mentality of, you know, you're no longer in Kansas anymore. On that first day when they actually, when I step out there and introduce myself, I want those recruits to understand that we're going to train them and we're going to train them hard as professionals and teach them how to be professionally a basically disciplined young Marine. Second of all, I want them to understand and get that culture shock of what's going to be expected of them. The ground rules, everything that, that, that we're going to demand of them and how we're going to demand of them, uh, our expectations. So that way, when it comes to them carrying out the daily tasks or daily missions, that they know we mean business and they know what needs to be and what is expected of them as recruits. The recruit's job is to fire watch is to maintain house, house security, weapon security, and recruit accountability. So they walk the house, count weapons, count the recruits that are on deck, and also they learn the 11 general orders. And when somebody walks on deck, they know to report the procedures, which includes the counts of equipment, the counts of recruits, and the counts of weapons on deck. E4 Marine Corps! E4 Marine Corps, I sir! The purpose of teaching the kids the rank structures is, for one, they're going to be working with people from the military all throughout the Marine Corps, Army, Navy, depends on their MOS. So it's important to know exactly who you're going to be working with, to demonstrate their respect and their customer courtesy to each other. All of that, it's important to actually teach everyone the rank structures because they're going to be tested on it on the T-32 test. Um, this school handles the loss of privacy in boot camp by um, Imagining that the other recruits are like my brothers and uh, treating this house like it's my actual home that I, um, that I left back in Washington. It is mandatory for the kids to constantly clean the house and maintain proper hygiene, to make sure that there's no sickness that spread. Also to teach them that attention to detail, what Marines are known for. We send the kids to medical to make sure that they handle all their issues. So that leaves maximized time for trainings and they always get it back to maximize their time. Today the recruits are doing laps around the track, a 400 meter lap. Uh, we're either going to do that four times with a cool down circle in between. The purpose of this is designed to get their cardiovascular endurance to a level to where they would be able to perform at a high level for their first PFT coming up this Friday. The main event that I see recruits struggling with on the PFT, surprisingly, is the crunches. Um, a lot of these recruits aren't used to having the core strength um, for whatever reason, and a lot of them struggle and some fail uh, due to their, uh, their crunch time not meeting the minimum standards of the Marine Corps. 21 pull-ups, 100 crunches, and have a run time of 18 minutes. But ultimately, that's, that's the perfect score, so in recruit training, that's what we're striving for. Oh man, it's just uh, chow to chow, hour to hour, man. It's just, it's nice being first. I love it. It just, it motivates me. If there's someone in front of you, you just got to pass them. Um, and if you, you screw up, you just know what you got to do next time. You just got to keep going. And I'm I just always motivated. I always wake up with enthusiasm. He sucks. Love 
Last night, this recruit's drill instructor went through and told them a story about a Marine who received the Medal of Honor uh, back in Vietnam. And this, uh, this recruit heard about that Marine going through an intense amount of pain for days, days on end, uh, saving his Marines, saving their lives. And the whole, the whole run that the Arsenal Marine can think about was the fact that this, this run's only 20 minutes long, but that Marine continued to go for days and days and days and gave his life in the end, sir. When this recruit wakes up in the morning, it can be quite challenging because the drill instructors come in all of a sudden and are screaming, and you may have just been dead asleep. But now you have to get up, you have to get your linen on, you have to get your pillow, you have to get your sweat tops and sweat, sweatpants off. And it, at the beginning, can be very, very surprising and challenging. Number one advice that I would give to pulleys coming in to recruit training soon is that Start moving with intensity and move very, very fast. So first phase is all about taking that civilian that we, we received and receiving and breaking him down into a recruit. It involves early mornings, waking up at 0405, getting online, making their racks, which is something they've probably never done before, and keeping the house clean at all times. The drill instructors are looking to cause constant stress throughout the entirety of first phase. This is to make sure that they understand where they are at and that they obey every order that we give them. Every Sunday morning, the recruits will wake up, go to chow, and then be delivered to each individual recruit's religious service. There, they'll spend anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours at their religious service, and then go back to the house for further training. The purpose of drill goes back to uh, the days of musket fire where we had to find a certain strategy in placing men with muskets in a formation to optimize that slow rate of fire. Uh, now today we use drill to establish teamwork and discipline. Now these individuals that come here to become United States recruit, Marine Corps recruits, um, they're used to touching their face, doing whatever they want to uh, here in formation. They don't have that luxury. We take that away from them. Now that's gonna establish that discipline to understand that there may be a circumstance where they're put into where they where they don't have that luxury to do that uh, in combat, where they have to understand instant willingness and obedience to orders, and drill is the foundation of that. IT is very intense. Whenever you do something wrong, they take you to the quarter deck and start making you do physical fitness. And you can, as fit as you could be, those drill instructors will break you down. IT, or incentive training, is a tool used by drill instructors to fix discrepancies. As the recruits get here, we, as drill instructors, demand perfection every day. Once a recruit is imperfect, he'll end up on the quarter deck. For future recruits, it's important to understand one thing. No matter what kind of physical shape you're in, when you get to recruit training, the stress mixed with the exercises is very difficult. Today is the first day for recruits uh, conducting their water survival training. First they're going to do a 
25 meter swim assessment so we can identify if they have the ability to swim or not. From there, they're gonna go to stay on the surface, which is where they'll stay in the water for five minutes and they're gonna float. Definitely just uh, listen to them, listen to the techniques they teach you because that will definitely help you with um, the, the swimming portion or the staying afloat part. This crew has been waiting every day to become a Marine. And kind of wearing this uniform right now, it's just very motivating. Very motivating, very motivating. From there, they're gonna go to a shallow water gear shed where they'll have a flak jacket, a Kevlar, and a rifle, and they're gonna go underwater and they're gonna drop their weapon, take their Kevlar off, and their flak jacket off. And then they're gonna go to the abandoned ship technique, and they're gonna, that's when they actually jump off the tower, and then they're gonna swim 25 meters and pull themselves out. Uh, I thought the swim call was pretty good. It uh, taught me a lot, water survival. And uh, it was very, with the gear on, it was, it was heavier than I thought it was gonna be. And it uh, really, you have to push yourself, push yourself, push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. The importance of McMap is to prepare the future Marine to be ready for any combat related situation. Not every time in combat are you going to have your rifle. McMap teaches and prepares those Marines to fight hand-to-hand -hand combat and win. McMap really helped uh, create discipline in this recruit because uh, this group barely knew how to fight. So it created like a lot of discipline and a lot of confidence in this recruit. Today the recruits are going to be doing the confidence course. They're going to be doing a lot of the high obstacles, like Stairway to Heaven, Slide for Life. This is mainly to boost up their confidence. A lot of the recruits have never been into a challenge or an, at a situation where they have to climb something high and they'll freeze. Uh, right now we're going to get them to break out of that zone and build up their confidence. Confidence course so far, how I'm handling it is a lot of intensity. Uh, takes a lot of cardio, that's for sure. I mean, other than that, I'm loving it. Uh, ain't no fun at boot camp, that's for sure. What I like most about attending the classrooms in the auditorium, sir, was learning about all my history, all the marine history that I didn't know about how far back we go, including the Continental Marines, how far back we've been fighting since all the wars. We've always been the first in the front, the last ones out, the strongest ones in. We're the ones that defend this country. We are who we are today because of our brothers who fell back then. It's crazy to think how before I came in here, I didn't know anything about the Marines, but the classroom taught me a lot more than I knew. It teaches you how to take care of each other, how to work as a unit, how to fight together, how to stand together, and die together if it comes down to it. needs to go on one more day is knowing I gave myself 100% and each day is a new challenge to give myself even more 100% I and mean, I know it'll make me a better person throughout my entire life. I want to be someone better, someone that can improve myself in some way. At the end of the day, I just need to make sure I'll make a better life knowing that if I can go through this, I can go through any obstacle in my life. What motivates me to keep going one more day, try to carry out a family legacy, fourth generation Marine. Team Week is the fifth week in recruit training. This is where recruits build on their small unit leadership and help each other out. So during Team Week, recruits have less anxiety and they're more motivated to train. Week one, they don't understand what recruit training really is. They still have that civilian mentality and they're actually transitioned to be recruits. But during Team Week of week five, they build on their small unit leadership and they work as a team to get daily tasks done with less supervision from training. training. Some of the jobs we were given, some were very important, some were very you know, medial, something as simple as sweeping the sidewalk on the uh, recruit highway 
but it all made a difference. And getting assigned those tasks and getting those tasks done was really the main priority when it came to team week. And that's something this recruit really enjoyed. Their confidence is, is building pretty high. At this point, the platoon is working as a team, and they're, and they're actually getting things done a lot quicker with less supervision. For a few weeks, and even myself included, you, you get the hang of it. You anticipate the training. You know what happens. You know that you're going to PT, and you know that the, how the schedule works. And you get the hang of it. It gets easier. During Team Week, recruits will participate in various PT events. One of the main PT events that the recruits will do is log drills. Log drills is imperative in recruit training as it exemplifies the skill of teamwork. Also on Team Week, the recruits will participate in their first uniform fitting. This is to get a baseline of the recruit's body style. Later on in the cycle, the recruits will go back for a second uniform fitting to finalize the product. At the end of Team Week, the recruits will participate in a 5K hike. The purpose of the 5K hike is to indoctrinate the recruits in the style of Marine Corps hiking and also instill confidence within the recruits for the long distances of hikes at Camp Pendleton. This recruit is looking forward to a change of scenery or even just the feel of how up north is going to be compared to how it is down here. And some of those things that we're getting ready to do are going to be a little more fun as we've been told. And I'm anticipating that the change will be good. In the Marine Corps, we train like we fight. Therefore, the Marines put an emphasis on hiking to prepare each and every single Marine for the possibilities of combat. Some recruits show up to recruit training having never been in a fight. The purpose of Pugil 6-3 is to get those recruits over that fear and to indoctrinate them in war fighting. The advice I would give to another recruit is to maintain intense the entire time and don't give up even though, even though you might be hit. The advice I would give to another recruit is Go straight for the head. I'm looking forward to going up north um, and final drill because our platoon have been working hard so we can take final drill. I think we're going to take it. Um, and also, yeah, about up north, I'm looking forward to that because that's where the real training begins. Everything's sped up. This recruits looking forward to final drill to finally get a trophy. This recruit is most looking forward to final drill competition. We came in second in the initial drill and this recruit knows that this platoon can do much better and take it. Table one because that's part of why I came, came here, you know, to learn about my firearm. And then land navigation because I know nothing about it and it'll be exciting to learn something new, sir. The purpose of the series commander inspection is to prepare those recruits for further inspections later on in training. During the inspection, various staff members throughout the company will ask recruits items such as military history, chain of command, and basic military knowledge. The recruits must keep bearing at all times. Bearing is the cornerstone of Marine Corps recruit training. Our place, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. And back. Just remember, that last time we were outside, there's no one around, right? Yes, sir. So everybody else was eating chow. We're out there working and grinding our butts on, right? Yes, yes sir. Hey, same thing out there, all by yourself. You, yes. see your drill shoulder, nothing else matters, got it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Lock everything out, everything, 
Perfection, got it? Yes, sir. I'm not asking for much, got it? Yes, sir. What am I asking? Perfection, Perfection sir. For 45 minutes of your life. Aye, aye, sir. You will be perfect for 45 minutes. Aye, aye, sir. That's all you need to do, got it? Yes, sir. So today we'll be going over final drill. It's the culminating event for all the training we've done over the past six weeks. For example, all the drill they've done, all the, the closed order drill events that we've done and, and trained for. They'll, they'll finally be putting that to the test. The drill masters will, will get together, they'll grade the platoon and see who comes in first and last for all six platoons. How we're gonna handle final drill on Saturday is we're gonna come in there, we're gonna be confident. We're gonna show them what we've learned and how fast we can progress and all the hours that they've heard that we've put into working on our drill, we're gonna throw it all out there on Saturday and we're gonna show them what a really good drill looks like. The upcoming events I'm looking most forward to are final drill and getting to go up north. And going up north, knowing uh, we only have a few more weeks until we become Marines. After conducting final drill, the recruits will have completed phase two of the training cycle. Now, they will begin to pack up all their belongings and head up north to Weapons Field Training Battalion aboard Camp Pendleton, California. The completion of first and second phase give the recruits the momentum needed for them to accomplish the physically and mentally demanding tasks ahead of them at Camp Pendleton. During first phase, the recruits have overcome many obstacles. Introduction to physical fitness, military history, and tactical combat casualty care make up the majority of what the recruits learn in first phase. Second phase, it's really all about making those civilians that were turned into recruits into better recruits and further ingrain the military and Marine Corps lifestyle on those individuals. This recruit believes uh, boot camp is about growth. This recruit's learned a lot about teamwork and Depending on other people and other people depending on you, keeping each other accountable is really important even when drill instructors aren't around so we act correctly and learn how to be Marines. This recruit is excited, <laughs> nervous, he knows it's going to be kind of nerve wracking going into a new environment, how to adapt quick, but he's ready for the challenge here. Upon arrival to MCRD, recruits may be physically fit from countless hours training, but they aren't always mentally ready for boot camp. The mental preparation is equally important, but frequently overlooked. Every now and then, even the toughest, most motivated recruit will ask themselves, why am I here? Is this really worth it? Recruits will struggle emotionally and psychologically, but that's all normal. In fact, it's healthy. In the military, we look adversity in the eye, determine ourselves to push beyond it and overcome. We encourage recruits to actively think about how they will handle the stress, then make a plan for those moments when they start to question their reason why. The strongest recruits have a goal. Maybe it's to walk across the parade deck at graduation, to make their families proud, or to challenge themselves harder than ever before. Then they visualize that goal, focus their efforts, and achieve more than they ever thought possible, mentally and physically. During week one at Weapons Field Training Battalion, the recruits will participate in Grass Week. During Grass Week, the recruits are indoctrinated in the Marine Corps Marksmanship Program, which makes the Marine Corps so successful in battles. During Week 2, the recruits will take all the information they learned in Grass Week and apply it during Firing Week. The recruits will actually take their weapons and live ammunition, go out onto the range, and participate in the Combat Marksmanship Program. During week three, the recruits will move into a field environment. While they're out in the field, the recruits will learn topics such as land nav, fire and maneuver, and will also expand on what we learned previously in terms of hiking. At the end of the crucible, the recruits will participate 
in a 13K hike. This will be the most physically demanding challenge of recruit training. Once the recruits reach the top, they will be awarded their Eagle, Globe, and Anchors. And earn their title, United States Marine. During grass week, primary marksmanship instructors take control of the recruits and teach them everything they need to know about their rifles. After some classroom instruction, the recruits will move into the circles where they will begin to snap in in different positions with their rifle. The different positions they will snap in are prone, sitting, kneeling, and standing. A Marine and his rifle is the most dangerous tool in the world. It is imperative that a Marine knows how to use his rifle during combat in order to preserve his life and the lives of Marines around him. What I think about the range so far is that it's a very beneficial place for me personally because it's teaching me the fundamentals of shooting a rifle, and this recruit has never shot a rifle before, so it's very beneficial for me overall. I like most about the range is probably table two, which what we're doing right now is a uh, rapid fire. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun to shoot rounds down range. Finally, like it took weeks and weeks of building up to come to come up to Pendleton and uh, finally get this to shoot this weapon because we've just been carrying it around with us, and uh, it's pretty fun to finally shoot shoot it. What runs through this crew's mind while taking care of the pits is just making sure that we get the targets up fast enough, and make sure we're scoring the cards right. When we're out loading on our magazines, sitting on the lines there, confidence is the only thing that this crew has on his mind. He's also thinking about his uh, grandfather, who was, uh, who was also in the Marines, who had to go through the exact same training this recruit is. So the only thing on his mind is shooting expert and shooting straight. Today, the recruits are going to be conducting their conference chamber exercise. Uh, this is the notorious gas chamber. Everyone in boot camp knows about this. The day you get there, everyone hears about the gas chamber. So today, they'll be learning about classes, about how to adjust the mask, how to fit the mask, and the immediate actions in order to use the mask so that way they can protect themselves when they're exposed to a cyber environment. So the most stressful part of the confidence chamber is the fact that CS is a riot control agent and it's meant to make you go internal. And the hardest part for the recruits is in order to stand there with bearing and discipline and just take it as it comes. One of the biggest things I always enforce is saying, stand there, take it. If you know it's going to hurt, it'll be an easy day. That's how it goes. So going into the chamber, these recruits need to have the mental aspect saying, you know, it doesn't matter how big or how strong you are. This is all about bearing and discipline at this point. I've seen some of the biggest guys, some of the biggest recruits that come through our chamber are usually the first ones to try to run out. So going into our chamber, I always enforce bearing discipline. And I'll say this a hundred times because all it takes, you just stand there, stand there and take it. What advice would I give to another recruit for the hikes? Uh, just take bigger steps. Honestly, just keep thinking about like what you're gonna do tomorrow. What you know motivates you. Don't think about like being stuck here, or don't don't think about you know how much how much you hurt. Think about what, what's coming towards you know, in the next few days. Honestly, I I, I feel like being recruit training has maybe you know value things I didn't value before as much as I should have. Like my family and friends. Like when I get out of here, I feel like I'm just gonna be a better person and not care about you know eating junk food or that kind of stuff. Or it's just really a humble experience. The entire crucible takes 54 hours to complete. During the first two days of the crucible, the recruits will encounter many obstacles. Those obstacles are meant to expand on all the information and tactics learned throughout the entirety of recruit training. Each obstacle has its own challenges. Those challenges mirror the challenges of past Marines. Okay, hey, I'm gonna stand on During the crucible, the recruits are extremely tired and dirty. Recruits are given less time to sleep and additionally, less food to consume during the conduct of the crucible. Day three of the crucible, the recruits will wake up 
and pack their belongings in order to make the final hike. The hike is long and physically and mentally exhausting. The recruits will have to dig deep in order to accomplish the mission at hand. So far, so good. Been, uh, it's been a little bit of a journey, but uh, I'm ready to get to the top and uh, earn that title. It's, uh, it's going to be a dream come true. And what motivates me to keep going one more day is I must finish what I started. Uh, also, I remember the reason why, uh, why I started. That keeps me going as well. And the reason is that I want to be a better man. What motivates me to keep going one more day is my brothers to my left and right. They pushed me. I'm here to fight for my country, defend my family, defend all those who were here before me. I came, I, I'm not from here. I came from a different area, but the Marine Corps is the first ones to fight for our country and defend what you love. So I joined to defend my family, defend my friends, defend everybody back home who right now is just working a normal job. My job is to be here and help them out and always be looking out for them like a guardian angel. The hardest part of the Reaper, um, probably the first hill of the Reaper, sir. I think just making it up that first hill and then keep on pushing through to the to the very end is a very honorable moment and a proud moment in my life. What was the hardest part of the Reaper? Just having the you know the mental strength to carry on, because uh, you know physically you feel destroyed, but. And sometimes it's like really hard just to power through. So I say, just having the mental strength to carry on. The hardest part of the Reaper was having to deal with hunger, having to deal with fatigue, having to deal with uh, a lot of pain and anguish, especially at the very last part where you know the prize is so close and having to push mentally farther than you ever have to get to where you needed to be. The thing I'm most, uh, the thing I'm most looking forward to, sir, some kind of brisket, some kind of steak, sir, eggs, cheese, maybe some sausage, tortilla, make a burrito, sir. Plan of attack of the Warriors' breakfast is to eat manageably, uh, not to eat too much. We've been uh, eating good portions this whole time, and to be able to eat uh, as all you can eat, it sounds like a really bad idea. Yes, my advice for the next generation of Marines is, number one, preserve our core values uh, to the fullest. That's extremely important as they uh, learn to uh, have a greater appreciation for our, our, the legacy in which they've inherited. The Vietnam one kind of hit home, all the stuff that they had to carry and the environment that they had to go through. It's. It's hard to put yourself in that situation, like to picture yourself in that situation. And um, I have a lot of respect for the men that had to go through that. The museum is great. I think it's a great thing to bring your family to and have them realize what you went through during recruit training. And it's also amazing to realize the kind of history that I now have since I'm now a Marine. So the battalion commander inspection, I thought it went very well. I thought my platoon showed a lot of composure. I, shot, we, I thought we showed um, a big transformation from when we got here into becoming Marines. Um, I liked the questions that were asked, loved the answers I heard. And overall, I think we did a very good job. And I think we did exactly what our battalion commander was looking for. Yeah. 
So today, what just took place was Battalion Commander's Inspection, uh, where we and my entire platoon were inspected by the Major and um, Lieutenant Colonel. It was, it was pretty nerve-wracking for myself, uh, but I got through it pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think also my platoon did it as well. Uh, we seem all confident in our performances and happy about our performances, so. So today, we're picking up our uniforms from uh, the clothing company down here and uh, we're getting ready for graduation. We have our inspection clothes too. We get to wear our Charlies. What it means to me to wear the Marine Corps uniform is like dedication. When I first saw my uniform, I just saw how clean cut it was, how good it looked. I couldn't help but put a smile on my face. I mean, just wearing it right now is, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to uh, wear this uniform finally. First thing that ran through my mind, you know, when first seeing the uniform and everything, I was like, it's getting closer and closer, you know, to being a Marine. And, and you know, I've been dreaming about it since about eighth, ninth grade. Some things I'm going to miss about boot camp is the people that I've met here. Mainly just going to miss being able to see them and talk to them every day. A couple of things I miss most about boot camp, I just have my brothers around me that cheer me on and motivate me on. The child, the child's good. The next advice that I'd give to the next recruits entering the squad, but um, honestly, speed and intensity would be key and maintain mental strength. Just know that everybody's going through the same thing. Uh, you're not alone on this. Just lean on the brothers to your left and right. The things that my recruiter prepared me physically was um, PT and dieting tips and the motivation to keep training. What kind of example did the drill instructor set for me? They set the best example, the best example of a Marine, the best example of a person to better yourself in every way in life. Today we're gonna do a moto run every cycle. The Marines get together and they do a little moto run for the other, for their family members to see. Uh, some, some cadences running around the depot. Just, just a little thing for the families that come to see their kids, see uh, the changes that they made, and for, for them to realize that th this is another step in their kid's life. It's, it's a new Our beginning for everybody. On 10 days of well-deserved leave. You want them to come home on leave? Yeah. I don't know, they look pretty relaxed. This is my last week in boot camp, and of course, I'm excited to see my family, and especially see my dad and see his reaction. Even though I think I'm gonna miss parts of boot camp. Uh, what, was my, what was going through my head when I was marching with my family to go to Liberty? Honestly, just, it was like just a blank, because it was kind of like when we got dismissed, it was just like, now what? As odd as it sounds, it was, I really didn't, I miss my family a lot, but it wasn't as much as at the beginning, because I got brothers here. This is my family. Uh, some thoughts that'll be running through my head, knowing that this is my last night here. Uh, as odd as it sounds, part of me is gonna miss this place. Uh, I don't know if it's the yellow buildings or what, but part of me is gonna miss just being here. The thoughts that are gonna go through my head tonight, um, it being my last time hitting the rack, is everyone knows me as not the guy that ever breaks sheets or sleep under a blanket. Um, I just lay on top of my rack just to make sure it's made at in the morning right when I wake up. But I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll break sheets tonight um, just because it's the last night and why not? Graduation marks the end of the Marines' time in boot camp. It is their final dismissal and culmination of 13 weeks of training. Graduation consists of the new Marines, their drill instructors, and key training personnel. Today is the big day that all of my brothers in arms, we graduate. Um, it's been a long three months. Now as I'm graduating and from the depot, I'm 
a team player and I'm selfless. What's running through my head right now is just overwhelming joy. There's no Marines in the family and I wanted to go through the hardest challenge that I could put myself mentally and physically through. To know that I wasn't going to, to know that it was going to be tougher than what I was expecting was uh, even more challenging. Um, it's been a long road, a long struggle for me uh, to get here. I've been here for four months, uh, having to struggle with the fractured rib, pulled muscles in my back, and definitely a struggle to go through the challenges and obstacles that was put forth me and to overcome it with brothers that I wish to stay in touch with every day for the rest of my life. Sit up, show you look at me though. Aye, sir. Aye, sir.